Hi, my name is Dr. David Seastone, and for a full-time job, I teach medical biochemistry to first and second year medical students like you. But for the next several hours, we're going to go on a journey through the biochemistry that's going to be relevant for taking your medical licensing exam. So let's go ahead and begin. The first section here, we're going to talk about nucleic acid structure and organization. So what I want you to take home from this section is the fact that you're not going to be highly tested on the specific structure of nucleic acid. It's just not done anymore. Nowadays on the board examinations, they want you to have an appreciation for nucleic acid structure, but mostly for how it interacts with DNA synthesis and then perhaps disease development due to enzyme deficiencies in nucleic acid synthesis and, nucleic, and, and enzymes that are going to be necessary for producing these nucleotides. Let's take a look. Let's first begin with the central dogma of molecular biology. So we know that for, for the central dogma, DNA is the hereditary material, it's the blueprint for making all of the proteins within our cells, it's what makes us who we are, it's what distinguishes us from one another, it's what distinguishes us from other species. But DNA isn't really the, the workhorse of the cell. Okay, DNA is kind of like the blueprint from which everything else is going to be built. So although DNA does have an ability to replicate itself, does have an ability to replicate itself, DNA also has an ability to express itself through a process that we call gene expression. So gene expression is going to involve two distinct pathways that we refer to as transcription and translation. In transcription, now, we're talking about DNA having an ability to create an RNA copy of itself. So we go from being deoxyribonucleic acid to being ribonucleic acid. And then the ribonucleic acid has an ability to go from being ribonucleic acid to being protein. So the information flows from DNA to RNA to protein. That's the flow of genetic information. Now, some viruses, some human pathogenic viruses, have acquired the ability to circumvent this central dogma of molecular biology. And what I'm talking about here specifically are the retroviruses. You've got your HIV, human, o, in, Im, human immunodeficiency virus that causes AIDS, and you've got the HTLV, the human T-cell leukemia virus, which can cause, uh, which can cause cancer. So these pathogens have acquired a reverse transcriptase ability. So they actually have an ability to take RNA information, convert it back to DNA information, and then take that DNA and integrate into the host genome. So reverse transcriptase activity is specific to retroviruses and not normally, not normally associated with human uh, DNA. There may be some exceptions with telomerase function, but we're not going to worry about that. Let's start out by comparing DNA and RNA. So we're going to compare the mechanisms of replication, where DNA is going to make more copies of itself, with the process of transcription, which is the initial process in gene expression, where you're making uh, RNA information for protein synthesis. Let's take a look. First of all, the types of nucleic acids between these two processes are going to differ. They're going to be different from each other. Okay, for DNA, we're talking about synthesizing deoxyribonucleic acid, whereas for RNA synthesis, we're talking about synthesizing ribonucleic acid. So those are going to be a little bit different. Very similar in structure, as we'll see, but there are a couple of differences we'll take a look at. The sizes, the lengths of the nucleic acids are going to differ between D DNA and between RNA, okay? They're going to be different. So for DNA, we're talking about a longer molecule, a long molecule. Matter of fact, if we look at our slide here, if we put DNA and laid it out on the, on the screen, we'd see that it has a certain amount of length to it. Let's pretend this is one of your chromosomes laid out there. What would be the size of RNA compared to that chromosome, do you think? 
Well, it would be much smaller. It would be like a little dot compared to the, the length of the DNA. So the point here is the following. DNA is going to be on the orders of hundreds of millions of base pairs in length. Okay, the entire human genome is three billion, about three billion base pairs. So making each chromosome on the order of hundreds of millions of base pairs. RNA, on the other hand, is going to be on the order of thousands of base pairs in size. So RNA much, much smaller uh, in size, in length, than, in, than is DNA. Okay, the next thing that's going to be different between these two are the enzymes involved. There's going to be DNA polymerases, and then there are going to be RNA polymerases. The DNA polymerases um, are going to be important for synthesizing the deoxyribonucleic acid. The RNA polymerases are going to be necessary for synthesizing ribonucleic acid. And there's actually going to be different polymerases that exist for making different types of RNA. Finally, the phases of the cell cycle where replication versus transcription are going to be different. Replication is going to take place during the S or synthesis phase of the cell cycle. The transcription is going to happen throughout all phases of the cell cycle. It's going to happen throughout all phases with one exception and that would be during mitosis when the cells are, are, are separating the sister chromatids from one another prior to cell division. So keep that in mind and as a matter of fact we'll take a look at the next slide which shows us the cell cycle, showing us the cell cycle. Now the cell will cycle between the G1, typically a cell will cycle between a G1, an S or synthesis phase, and a G2 phase prior to undergoing mitosis, prior to undergoing mitosis. Resting cells, cells that are non-dividing, they live most of their life cycle in the G0 phase. What does G0 mean? The G0 phase of the cell cycle is kind of like the cell is just hanging out. It's not really doing much. It's just hanging out, leaning up against the wall, doing its thing. It's not really actively metabolizing. It's just doing its job. So what do you think of for a resting cell? Think of a neuron, a neuron, or perhaps a myocyte. What are these cells doing? Well, the neuron is just sitting there maintaining a sodium potassium pump. It's allowing nerve impulses to move along an axon, just doing its job. Not really dividing and, and actively uh, synthesizing DNA. A myocyte, just hanging out. It's taking calcium and contracting its actin myosin filaments. It's allowing your, your muscle to contract. Okay, not really actively growing and dividing. Those are cell types that hang out in G0. The boards want you to know that. Which cell types live in the G1 phase primarily? These are cells that are going to be a little bit more active, that are being turned over more rapidly. I'd like to think of the intestinal epithelial cells. Think of these intestinal epithelial cells as constantly sloughing off and being turned over and being renewed. So really, they're not going to hang out in the G0 phase very long. They're going to live mostly their, their life cycle in the G1 phase because they're going to be having a need to synthesize new DNA and undergo cell division. So intestinal epithelial cells uh, uh, would be another example. Now, during the S phase, that is when DNA replication is going to happen. When we talk about replication in a couple of chapters here, we're going to talk about what's going on in the S phase. That is the special phase where, where DNA synthesis happens. Where does gene expression happen? That is transcription translation. It happens all other times. Okay, so transcription and translation is going to happen throughout all phases of the cell cycle. Notice one key exception here, and that is mitosis. During mitosis, there's no gene expression occurring. No gene expression during mitosis. This is a specialized phase of the cell cycle where the sister chromatids are going to align at the center of the cell. They're going to be pulled apart when the, the, the spindle apparatus is formed. And they're going to, of course, then